comes on. We welcome those of you joining us in Annapolis. 52nd all-time clash between Navy and Air Force. Air Force won the toss, elected to defer. Navy on the game's opening drive. Third and 27. The inside run has yielded little. That's the second best run Navy's had today, but DeMonte Meeks disrupts Nelson Smith, and Navy will be forced to punt. And so far, Navy has attempted a couple of passes, got about to the drop point for the quarterback, and he's seen his his receiver not there. He's had to pull it down and run. That was an obvious passing situation, trying to change it up with Air Force, and they weren't buying it. First time this year, Navy does not score a touchdown on its opening drive. Had done so in the first three affairs of the campaign. Owen White just gets it off. Ben Peterson in retreat, makes the fair catch. What should we be looking for today, Randy? Well, I think a lot of the things to look for, we've talked a little bit about it, and that's the passing game of Air Force. DJ Hammond is accurate, has good zip, and look at the way he can just drop that thing in stride into the, into the receiver. Now, you also have to look for a very aggressive defense. Newberry, the defensive coordinator of Navy, they attack. They give you different looks, diff different blitzes. They'll be in D.J. Hammond's head. Hammond has been under center all this year. The hard cadence, the sweeping look. And Rensburg is nothing. Navy sniffs it out, stretches it out. Jacob Springer gets the stop. Time now for the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. Donald D.J. Hammond the third. Five and three in his career as a starter that started with a win against Navy a route last year. And last week didn't start. Sanders started, came out early with an ankle injury. Hammond came in and really was the star of the game. We're told Sanders not dressing today. Play fake, backside pressure, one-footed throw, open, leaping grab, Gerard Sanders. He is his favorite target, matched up with Alon Nash, 21 yards. Yeah, it's pretty consistent. If they're going to throw the ball, they want to get it to Sanders. And when they do try to get it to him, Hammond knows how to drop it in, and he knows how to put it where nobody else has got a shot at it. He put that one high and let Sanders go up after it. That's right on average. He leads the country in yards per completion at just under 21. Second in America, his counterpart Malcolm Perry. The inside run for David Birdo, and he's got very little, only a yard. Jackson Perkins the stop. But where Cade Wagaspak sets up, Randy, you see the path of the football. Well, that's generally where the ball's been going the last couple of weeks, almost without exception. Wherever 87 lines up, the ball goes. This is a very good offensive line. Marquez is in for Kreps at guard, but otherwise, they're intact and very effective. Maybe adjusts crowded front. Air Force motion. Hammond fakes to Rensburg, flips it out a little long for Ben Peterson. Incomplete. Well, third down has been a dominant down for Air Force. This is the defense they'll oppose, and Nizair Cromartie can get to the quarterback. Well, speaking of third down, that's Nizair Cromartie's down. The pass rush, the blitz, how many will they bring? You know they're going to bring 56. Who else is coming after Hammond? Air Force leads the country 60% on third down. Navy top 10 defensively on third down. Springer shows edge pressure. He fades back. They only send three. Hammond with space. Hammond flicks it. Caught. And Air Force converts. Cade Waggis package just his third catch of the year. Cameron Kinley wraps him up 25 yards. Nazir Cromarty drops off into the flat. When Hammond starts to run, Cromarty gets up. And by coming up, that opens up that pass to Waggis pack. The pass game for each team so pronounced. Air Force great success in the air early on. Christian Mallard checks in as the deep fullback for the first time. And Mallard on the plunge. And that yields little. Diego Fago, the leading tackler for Navy, arrives on time. Yeah, Mallard had a couple of touchdowns last week. The fullback position, the position in general, was highly effective against San Jose State. And that's really where this whole triple option starts. If you don't stop the fullback, you may get real tired of seeing the fullback carry the ball. And inside their offensive line last week was uber 
uber successful in covering up blockers. 223 yards, five touchdowns from the fullbacks last week for Air Force. Navy pressures. Deceptive inside run. And only get a couple of yards. Paul Carruthers, who got the start at Will Linebacker, and another third down arrives here. Yeah, last third down, we saw Navy show five people up front on the line of scrimmage. They brought three and dropped eight. I would say here around the 25 yard line, Brian Newberry, the defensive coordinator, highly likely to bring a blitz here. At least five coming. Wagestack sees late press top of the screen. Here's the pressure. Hammond, one footed, floats it, picked off, intercepted. Evan Fuckman gets the INT, and the first turnover of the game belongs to Navy. The driving pressure of Diego Fago forces a no no. The Navy defense shows blitz. Look at all the defenders coming. There are seven, at least eight comes late. They get right in DJ Hammond's grill, and that causes the errant pass. Giveaways a problem for Air Force. For those watching on CBSSports.com, streaming concludes after the break. We'll continue on CBS Sports Network, CBSSportsNetwork.com slash Channel Finder. Evan Fockman with the hardware, he gets the pick, no score. As we say hello to all those in service, special purpose Marine, hello. Those watching all around the world, soaking up the scene and on the side of the Air Force, deployed service members in Qatar, soaking up the action, the atmosphere. It's the first leg of this year's CIC Trophy race. John Sadak, the Hall of Famer, Randy Cross, has been a great start. It really has, and it's been a lot of what we expected. We've seen some passing, but we've seen two defenses that are going to be attacking like crazy. A lot of blitzes, a lot of blitzes that look like there'd be seven coming and only three come. This will be a day where every quarterback in this game is going to be incumbent upon them to be really sharp just as keep from throwing the ball in the wrong place as we've already seen Hammond do once. The intensity, the physicality. Malcolm Perry tried to load up and throw a couple of times, but Ken Niamatololo's quarterback had very little breathing room and the run game was shut down. Perry got a tuck. Thought about getting down, but takes the harm and picks up the first down. Garrett Coppola the stop. Starting lineups brought to you by Chick-fil-A and part of the conversation in the wake of the Memphis game. Get down Malcolm Perry from his coaches, from teammates, from everybody. Ivan Jasper, Kenny New Montalolo, everyone. Don't fight for that last yard. And it, it's, it's so against the grain of what this young man's always been. He's always been a running back fighting for every inch. Now he's a quarterback and they're telling him to get down. And here, issue on the exchange, ball lost, gathered with a loss of a yard. Air Force says it has it. Air Force football. Turnover followed by turnover. Mosesa Fafita, the big fella. That's two senior captains, Ford Higgins and Malcolm Perry, the center and the quarterback. They got to share blame for that one. That one ends up on the ground, and that's what these coaches drill into these players' heads on both these teams. That is their poison. Their poison is the ball on the ground. Well, Air Force gets the plum field position. Troy Calhoun's offense back on the field. Hammond feeds Remsburg, runs into his own man. Fuckman gets him down low. Help from on high, earns a little more than two. Now Navy, one of eight teams in all the FBS to not give up a single point after giving it away. That's only the fifth giveaway of the year for Ken Niamatololo's team. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a heck of a stat. It won't last like that, but when you can do that for the first three, four games of the season, that's a, that's a sign you're doing things right on the defensive side. You need a negative play if you're Navy here. If you're Air Force, Keep an eye on number seven, Sanders. Inside run here, Taven Birdo. He earns a few. Paul Carruthers the stop. Armed Forces football proudly supported by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's.
Well, third down and three. Air Force has been brilliant on third down this year. Malcolm Perry watching this with keen interest after giving it away. For those of you familiar with Navy football, a lot of going forward on fourth down. Don't be surprised if they don't get it here if Air Force goes for it in this part of the field on fourth. The blitz is on. Toss play. No numbers for Remsburg. Tries to cut it back. Second effort. Ball free. Navy scoops it up. Another turnover. Jackson Pittman wins it. Randy, this is crazy. Oh, yeah. Remsburg doesn't protect the ball. The Air has, Force is showing it here. He has to come back. That's when the ball, the head gets on the ball and the ball pops loose. No indication from our officials yet. Pittman definitely had the ball. Ruling on the ruling on the is a fumble recovered by Navy. Navy then recovered the ball down on the ground. First down. Navy. So Navy ball and Pittman out of bounds. That's a turnover on three straight possessions. Right there, Ramsburg goes to cut back. They rip the ball free. See Pittman picks it up. Yeah, he was definitely up. Remsburg was off the ground when that ball came out. They'll review that more than likely. It looked like Kevin Brennan, who got the pick against ECU, helped knock that free. We'll step aside. They'll sort it out. Who wants the football? No score. Back in Annapolis while we were away, review began. What do you see, Randy Cross? Well, it's not the fumble you're thinking about. It's this one. Watch Pittman. Here comes Ferguson. There goes the ball out of Pittman's hands. I think Ferguson picked his pocket. Watch this angle. This is the best angle. Look at the ball. It's in his possession. It's in his possession. It's gone. Ferguson has it. Now that he's down, I think Ferguson got it back. Remsburg put that ball on the ground. Pittman picked it up, but Ferguson snatched it right out of the big nose tackle's arms. Yeah, it looked like Kevin Brennan punched the ball free, and Parker Ferguson, the left tackle, engaged there with Jackson Pittman, who, by the way, was heavily recruited as an offensive lineman. Navy finally won his services by giving him the choice. Do you want to play offense or defense? He chose defense, and he was matched up with another big fella. Now, so far, we've had a couple of fumble recoveries, each by the largest man of the respective defense wearing so number 99. Remember, it was third and three right? when that play started. So you had a fumble, and then you had another ball ripped away. So now it's going to be first down Air Force at the point of the fumble by Pittman. Here's the word. After reviewing the play, following the fumble, number 99 of Navy loses possession of the ball. Air Force has possession, first down, and 10 Air Force. Well, you called it, partner. So Parker Ferguson, the starting left tackle, won it from defensive lineman Jackson Pittman, and the Falcons have it back. Yeah, that's a great play by an offensive lineman. Now you see some of the skills necessary at the college football level, because you know Parker Ferguson doesn't get a chance to practice that much. But as an old lineman in college, there's a good chance he was a D lineman in high school where he practiced that all the time. He wanted to play D line. Air Force called him shortly before signing day, said, We're full. Are you willing to play offensive line? He gets spelled by Adam Jewell here. Hammond changing things up. The inside run, nothing. Punishing contact. Nizer Cromartie led the charge. Here are the big moments. Yeah, you want action? This first quarter's had all the action you can handle. This crowd's just now catching their breath off of the last couple of turnovers. We've had an interception. We've had a fumble. We've had a tearaway possession change. A little bit of everything. Only thing we haven't seen is a point off turnover or a return for a touchdown. Last year, Navy got on the board first, and Air Force responded with 35 unanswered. Berto takes a few for a ride, including Diego Fago. Earns about the 28. It'll be third and five. Jacob Springer 
part of the pop there. Another big third down. Yeah, nice job by Springer for go inside Pittman, clogging up that running lane for the fullback. Air Force will stay committed. You know, sometimes fans go, why do they keep running the ball up the middle? Well, if you can't establish that run inside, the rest of your runs generally won't work. Better pass catching back. Joshua Stoner is in. Following blocks, punishing contact. Diego Fago wraps up Hammond. He gets the 25. It's fourth down to the couple. And they're going to send on the kick unit. Yeah, these could be the first points off a turnover that Navy's given up this year. Great defense. I mean, you, you had eight different Navy defenders that were there on that tackle. About a 43 yarder from Jake Conkey. Fourth and two. Stay on side if you're Navy and try to draw him off if you're Air Force. Conkey. It's good. Well, Jake Conkey, officially from 42, remains perfect. McKenzie Amatololo pumped. They hold him to three. Tomorrow night, 6 Eastern, the toughest sport on dirt takes the stage. The PBR Minneapolis Invitational. The Unleash the B-Series continues right here on CBS Sports Network. Both Air Force and Navy had questions health-wise at quarterback in recent weeks. For more, let's welcome in the third member of our crew, Sheehan Stanwick Birch. Thanks, John. Air Force and Navy both dealing with dinged up quarterbacks. You mentioned how DJ Hammond for Air Force didn't start last week. He was recovering from a sprained ankle. Coach Troy Calhoun told us he was not limited in practice this week. And Navy's Malcolm Perry left the Memphis game three times with an arm shoulder injury. He really was limiting his passing during practice this week, trying to get back to full strength. Told us he did a lot of ice and so far we're gonna have to watch them to see if they've been able to fully overcome the effects of their injuries. Appreciate it, Sheehan. Yeah, Randy, we've seen Perry load up but not really unleash yet. Of the two quarterbacks, that shoulder of Perry's is the one that bears the most watching because the way these defenses are playing, they're blitzing a lot. That right. means you're gonna get a lot of single coverage. That means you're gonna get a lot of open receivers. Can he get the ball to an open receiver? His throws didn't look the same when he was on the field in the late stage Thursday against Memphis last week. Conkey sends this one a little shorter. A chance Warren takes a chance. And he's down at around the 28 yard line. A 21 yard run back the rest of the offense for Navy Michael Cooper a big target that could be a big factor. Yeah it's a he's a receiver six foot five 220 pounds. Kenny Niamatololo said we've got to find a way to get the ball in his hands and let him make plays. And Cooper was offered by Air Force Army and multiple Mountain West programs out of San Antonio Texas. Perry trying to shake instead gets Kyle Johnson Lakota Wills right on top of him. The defense for Air Force includes Jordan Jackson highly coveted by Navy out of high school and he is a big rangy fast defensive end for Fita, a pillar inside Lakota Wills that linebacker he was in on that tackle there. They've got some scraping running guys at linebacker. Malcolm Perry dragging a Falcon with him. That's Kyle Johnson once more Jackson's high school teammate down in Jacksonville Florida. That's a nice job by Johnson because if he doesn't if he doesn't make that play this play goes for a long ways. Was there a face mask here. A little bit of a brush but not a tug. Well third and three what do you look for. More of the same option. Probably into the boundary. The best pass catcher is on the near left, number 13, Chance Warren. Perry has nothing. Running for his life. Runs away from Wills. He gets shouldered out of bounds. He'll lose yards. Milton Trey Bug, the third, a cornerback. When you see a quarterback hung out to dry, somebody went the wrong way. Watch Perry. Uh, hold on. I was supposed to be faking the ball to that. Somebody. And then suddenly he's trying to add lib, but it's it's 11 on one at that point. That's happened a few times today, Randy. That happened a lot last year when it was basically Perry between the tackles all game, and 
one of Navy's worst offensive efforts in years. Pressure and intensity pop seams. I could see where that could relate to even more than football. That one just gets off. Owen White then gets hit down. Peterson picks it up on the bound. Yeah, there was no roughing there. It's not roughing when the Air Force player puts the Navy player into the punter. You can't rough your own guy with your backside. 44 yard punt will step away. Everyone in on the action. On force, they have the numbers. That's why you haven't seen anything outside. First time all year, Navy trails after a quarter. Second time, Air Force has led after a quarter. You're watching Armed Services Saturday on CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Or why um, those that go to a service academy distinguish themselves, um, they're more than just an athlete. The fact that someone is, is dedicated enough to go to a service academy lends them into a category of, of more than just an athlete or more than just an academia. And, and people expect you to be all above, and we live up to that. Colonel Jarvis Baker, class of 93 at the Air Force Academy, a three-year letterman at quarterback, helped the 90 and 91 teams to bowl wins. Day in the life of a cadet brought to you by today's military. We look at linebacker Kyle Johnson, who, by the way, with this kind of schedule, has a 394 GPA. So that homework starts at 2010 hours. In case you're curious, that's 810 at night. It goes all the way to midnight. And you just turn your brain off and go right to sleep. Now Kampari turns the passing game on, connects with Michael Cooper. The big play in a big way. That is exactly what this offense, both these offense needed. Big play in the passing game because both defenses are sitting on the receivers. Just one-on-one -on -one straight down the field. And Malcolm Perry showing no ill signs of that shoulder on that throw. And they love it, those in service watching on each side with highly vested rooting interest. First completion for Navy today. Perry, why not take another shot wide open? Cooper, smash, and he's down. Milton Trayvon the third, late matched up with him again. A 41-yard completion followed by a 24-yard pickup. Great pick recognition by Perry. You're going to see a hole open up right here. Watch the play develop. Cooper goes around from where he lined up inside, and he there's no one there that runs out with him. Inside, and the Air Force D holds. Grant Donaldson, who has starred in the games against the academies, career-high nine tackles against Darmy, and his first career start had four tackles, one and a half for loss against Navy. Both those long pass plays, though, for Ken Niamatololo's offense, that will back those defensive backs up a little bit. That'll make it more possible to run outside. Touchdown to the red zone, 12 of 13 trips entering today for Navy. Tackle over, strong right. Toss Nelson Smith, standing up, touchdown! Nelson Smith came out of that Memphis game a little dinged up. Didn't practice a whole lot this week. Looks like, looks like he got pretty fresh pretty quick the way he handled that run. Great blocking inside. Nice play call upstairs by Ivan Jasper, the offensive coordinator of Navy. Drive that took just one minute and 44 seconds. And the pass plays a huge part of it with Perry to Cooper. Well, it all started with the big pass play to Michael Cooper. How do you soften up the defense? Hit him long like this. Then they leave him wide open. Then excellent blocking and play calling equals six points. And do those guys love it? Yeah. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Ricky Dobbs, filming from the Middle East in Bahrain, where I currently plan missions for Tomahawk missiles. 
My time at the Naval Academy was filled with many priceless moments and memories that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Good luck today, guys. Go Navy. Be there for us. Today's installment of Navy's Greatest Legends brought to you by The Exchange, the great Ricky Dobbs. 49 career rushing touchdowns at one point held the record for most rushing touchdowns by a college QB in a single season. 27 and 09 broken by Keenan Reynolds in 2013. It's a sellout, Randy. It's the fourth biggest crowd in the history of the stadium, and three of the four have been Navy Air Force. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can see why. The intensity, the excitement of this game, the chances they take. Benjamin Waters won't take a chance. Some contact upfield away from the ball. Let's take a look at Navy's last possession. Well, pretty simple. How do you back them off? You back them off with one of those. That's like a jab in the chops. And then you back it up with a right cross. And then you let your offensive line get you an easy one inside. Well, Malcolm Perry, very capable. Shoulder appears healthy, but his counterpart, Donald D.J. Hammond, he can sling it too. Showing blitz. They bring it. Birdo barrels for a couple. Paul Carruthers gets a stop. Now usually when you run the fullback, you want to run them basically behind the guards in that A-gap area. You saw that blitz being faked. It wasn't really faked. It came in the A-gap. That's why it had to bounce out. But that's prime territory for a linebacker like Fago just to scrape into that area and make that tackle. You know, linebackers generally have big numbers when option teams face each other. They go quick here on a weird formation and the toss play that Navy adjusted numbers to. Fago gets the stop, the ball to the 31, third and four. Yeah, Brian Newberry, the defensive coordinator, told us the other day, you know, all my guys know how to get set up, but when they see weird formations, an extra lineman over here and an extra receiver, they know just slide over, just establish a new center, and get the strength and the numbers the way you want them into that boundary. Air Force one of five on third down has failed on the last four with two giveaways. And they lose the ball. They fall upon it, but Navy pounces. Loss of a yard, fourth down. The top third down team in America, Randy, is now one for six. And that was just a snap right into the hands. Hammond, it would appear, never really had that. Watch that. He gets it right, really, on the fingertips, goes to step back. When he steps back, the ball never leaves. It stays on his tips and falls to the ground. Christian Mallard saves the giveaway. That's where that quarterback has to ride. His hands have to ride with the center to get that ball in the proper spot. Charlie Scott to punt. Garrett Wynn return man. Fair catch wave. Brought in with contact. Navy sidelines going bananas. 47-yard punt. We'll step aside. The emotions run super high. Flooded with feeling on the day. Each team, big plays. Back in Annapolis, 7-3 Navy. Dignitaries on hand today. Down to the field, Sheehan Standwick Birch with U.S. Navy Admiral Michael Gilday and U.S. Air Force General David L. Goldfield. Thanks, John, so much. With the graduates of Naval Academy, Air Force Academy. Now give us the insider perspective, being alumni of these service academies, what this rivalry means between the two teams. Well, today we're competitors. Tomorrow we're going to be teammates. Uh, but we're, we're proud of our midshipmen on the field, in the sands, and the entire United States Navy. And uh, as I said, Dave and I are competitors today, but we're the best of teammates after this game's over. I saw you nicely shake hands together. Do you yeah. have similar memories your time at Air yeah. Force? So for 364 days a year, you can't find any air between us. But on this day, we compete. But we have Navy right now exactly where we want them, right? Which is a little bit overconfident and at sea level. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and your service to the country. You bet. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate the service of all those here, all those watching. Here's Jordan Jackson physically imposing his will on Nelson Smith, who is the game's only touchdown. Armed Forces football proudly supported by Golden Corral. 
What's your feel for this one so far, Randy? So roller coaster like in the yeah, start. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I've noticed one thing here. If you look at the top of the screen, a little more pad up here to Michael Cooper, just giving him some respect. He's already run by him once for a big play. They're not going to let him do it again. Timeout. Navy, this is their first charge of the half. 30 seconds in length. Call timeout, midshipman. Back after a Navy call timeout. Why call that timeout, Randy? Well, maybe you don't have the right personnel for what the play that's going to, that's going to be called. Still have that pad at the top of the screen, not at the bottom. And second down, Perry looking for his third connection. C.J. Williams, first down, Garrett Coppola on top of him for the tackle. How about C.J. Williams coming from that A-back slot? which is on the right side. They run up the field. Then he runs a little uh, post corner there. Nice job. Those A-backs can be dangerous. We would kind of refer to these, these positions as kind of slots, but they're basically halfbacks in this offense. Perry, a later pitch. There's Williams again, lost his footing some. Milton Trey Bug the third right around him. Only a couple of yards, second down and eight. A little more, little softer corner, you know, and that's that's borne out by that extra little space, that pad that they're putting on Cooper at the top of the screen. Pad is space, that's space you have to fill if it's a run. Cooper a couple of catches for over 20 yards. Oh, nice misdirection here in Air Force, great read. They were not duped in the least. Grant Donaldson, Kyle Johnson, Swarm and destroy Taj Malloy. Well, that's the thing. I mean, how many times do they see this in practice from their own guys? And this is the old counter tray where you pull the backside guard and tackle the play that the Redskins made so famous starting back in the 80s. Everybody still runs that play, but they started motion to the left, the counter tray to the right. Air Force sniffed it immediately, never bought a bit of that motion. Each team just one third down conversion. Reverse. Chance Warren, he can throw. And Warren takes off. Spot looks to be Josh Short. Jordan Jackson gets the hit. They're going to give him the first down. There's Chance Warren, top of the screen. Watch everything that happens on the right side. A hand back. Right here, it's going to be a pass. Then he sees, I can't. He wanted to get the ball to Malcolm Perry, who was down the field. But Air Force covered the Navy quarterback when he went down the field. Air Force knows Chance Warren. He was offered by Air Force, Army, and Navy. Crowded front for Air Force. Perry pitches C.J. Williams through the first hit, the second and the third and the fourth, led by Kyle Johnson, help from Grant Donaldson. Only a couple. Yeah, the, the pressure really comes from Fedulum, the safety coming from this area. Look at him come up and that turns it back inside. That's the key to that play. Whoever's your force, if it's the corner or the safety, they have to get up in front of that back. And even if you don't make the tackle, make the back go back inside. That's where all the other tacklers are. Perry looking to throw again. The touch perfectly floated. And another big conversion to Cooper. Lakota Wells, Milton Bug hit him after 28. Well, I think you can officially stop worrying about Malcolm Perry's arm. He has thrown some nice long, he's thrown a couple nice long balls, and he's thrown two really nice touch passes. Because that's right in between the safety and the corner for Cooper to go up and get it. Ivan Jasper has been touting Cooper since fall camp said he had a chance to be the next great Navy wide receiver as a pass catcher. Toss to Nelson Smith. That yielded touchdown last time and again. Two touchdowns on the ground for Nelson Smith. Watch the toss to the left. Cooper's over there. Williams is over there. They both get the force. I talked about force turning it back in. They both take those defenders and turn them back in. That means there's a soft corner there for the touchdown. 
Malcolm Perry coming through in a huge way. Just under four minute drive and the pass attack of Perry to Michael Cooper of paramount importance. Bijan Nichols nearly perfect on point after this year. Perfect today. But that touchdown was all set up by the big pass again to Michael Cooper. Great pass by Malcolm Perry. And how about this execution? Four perfect blocks, six points, and about 40 happy faces. This week's Where Are They Now? Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Kaipo Noah Kahea Kuenhada, wide out and quarterback in his Navy career, 26 touchdowns on the ground, MVP of the matchup against Air Force. These days, the Range Company commander in San Diego, California. His teams won the CIC all of his four years. We'll do a little math. There's a corner out here. So there's one, two, three, four. Watch these four guys over here and the job they do blocking. Four on four, those numbers favor the offense because the fifth guy's got the ball, and it's going to be six if four block four. There's so much math here, Ray. <laughs> You, you said there wouldn't be math. Waters return man. He started that fair catch wave immediately. Monday night, 6 Eastern. Join CBS Sports Network as our team of NFL experts break down all the Week 5 action exclusively from a quarterback's perspective. Don't miss NFL Monday QB on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Uh, Randy, I feel like it's loading up to that first big connection for DJ Hammond. Hey, it's got to come. They need to reestablish the passing game and back Navy on off a little bit. Do the same thing to Navy. Navy did to them. Navy showing all that pressure. Hammond down. Diego Figo. That'll be a loss of a yard, and we journey to New York. Appreciate that. Wow. That's an upset. Hammond trying to upset this game. Under throws his man incomplete. The touch has been a little off for Hammond that time to Gerard Sanders. That one looked a little wobbly. Did somebody get a finger on it? See it come out. Yep. Yep, sure was. It was touched. See the way it's sort of rolling end over end? That was a nice job by Pittman getting his hand on the ball. That's the second time he's had his hand on a football today. Third and 11. First time was as a ball carrier. And then lost it. Can Air Force keep this drive going? Swing it out. Swing him down, but Sanders has the first down. Kevin Brennan gets the stop. See, the aggressive defense, it's great. You're going to have man, but that's what you get because at the outside, it's a receiver and a DB. Sanders goes out, makes the catch. Luckily for Navy, Brennan can make the tackle. If you don't make that tackle, there's nobody else over there. You wonder, does Air Force have to start involving the fullbacks more? They have been neutralized. We're dominant against San Jose State. Hammond showing some shake. And he can explode. DJ Hammond finally tracked down by Jacob Springer. He springs for 18. Now, this is a scrape play. Your linebackers have to spill and make this play. Watch the linebackers, and they don't make the play. One gets the fullback, and Fago overruns it and doesn't get Hammond. That's why it's a big play. Now, another inside run and a stumble. Thanks to some Navy contact, including Kevin Brennan. Jackson Pittman got the initial tumble there of Mallard. And Troy Calhoun spoke about Mallard's chance to get some, some runs last week, a career-high 70 yards, said it was good for him to be involved in collisions, that he needed that experience for games like this. You know, it's you got to get those bruises, and you got to get used to holding on to the ball when you get drilled. 
And the delayed handoff read wonderfully. There's Diego Fago again, swinging down Joshua Stoner. Now there's the opposite. Diego Fago does not overrun it. Coming from the inside linebacker position, watch him scrape, keep the perspective person perfectly, and make the tackle. Didn't overcommit and was there to do it. Jacob Springer seemed to think there was movement left side there. There was movement. I thought the movement came on the Navy defensive side. I'm surprised they didn't call him off sides. Adam Jewell is the left tackle here, rotating with Parker Ferguson. The blitz up the gut. Remsburg hasn't had many touches in a while. He pierces the 42. Well, Paul Carruthers there gets to the 38. It'll be a couple of yards to gain here. What do you do? Oh, it's average day of doing business. If you're an option team, there's a high chance you go for it on fourth and short. Because that's all up to these big offensive linemen. Fourth down at a couple of yards. No jewels in there, left tackle. Laufenberg at left guard. Birdo the fullback. Hammond turns it up himself and shoulders down a midshipman. Jackson Perkins finally chops him down, but what a run by Hammond for the first. Wow. And Tell there's you a what. midshipman down here. Yeah, it, it could have been Perkins. It could be Perkins. Yeah, it is Perkins. I think he's the one. He might have caught the the shoulder and the chops when Hammond lowered his shoulder there, John. <laughs> Navy starting defensive end Jackson Perkins visibly limping. Let's take a look at the play. Well, you got to you got to find him really on the play, and he's right here, number 96. And Hammond lowers his shoulder right into him. Watch that right knee. Then he's got his leg underneath his body. That right foot never moved. It stayed as the rest of the body kind of folded over it. I hope he's flexible. Air Force converts on fourth down. Now four of six on fourth down this year. Ken Niamatololo going to have to show the flexibility of his defensive line. Denzel Polk normally the next man up at that end spot. Pressure shown. Now they're checking out. The Navy pressure off. They believe Ron Hammond slips through and spins off a hit, loses football. And down to the 20, they'll get a dozen. Dave Tolentino hits him down. Three important players, backer, backer, and watch the three. And goes out, backer scrapes. Other backer over scrapes again, and Hammond just cuts right back in behind him. He's, get, he's getting a real good feel for where and what gap these linebackers are going to be in, and he's not filling it. This is Hammond's best drive. Remsburg gets smashed. Brennan shouldered him hard. Jarius Warren part of the pop. Caden Remsburg is supreme speed. Show that of the 25-yard gallop in overtime when they beat Colorado. But he hasn't been able to use it. Well, he hasn't had much in the way of openings to do it. Right. When they've tried to run on the outside, you've seen... Force just basically coming up the field and denying him the field. Birdo, the deep fullback. Could Hammond uncork one here. Remsburg gets fed on the reverse. And Remsburg thwarted. They try to use that speed, but Warren and Tolentino stand him up. Now we've established Remsburg's a 4-3 guy, but one guy that's a 4-3 is not going to get away from one, two, three, four, five defenders. I don't care how fast you are. You can't get out of that box. Third down and 10. Mallard checks in at fullback. They go three wide. Hammond, one on one, just off on the timing. The coverage there is Sanders smothered by Cameron Kinley and the pressure from Nizair Cromartie. The blitz caused the early throw. 
They wanted to get the ball. Working on Kinley is Sanders. If you throw a normal out, that might be a completion. Right. But the blitz would not allow Hammond to stand there and step into his pass. Give that incompletion to Brian Newberry, the defensive coordinator upstairs. 40-yard try from Jake Conkey. He's hit from 42. Into the wind, right to left. And this one is good. Well, Conkey perfect on the day and the season on his field goals officially from 39, but Ken Niamatololo's defense holds them to three. Heading your way, the halftime report powered by Ram Truck spreads over Houston Nut, Kevin Carter in our CBS Sports Network studio in New York. They'll take a look around the landscape of college football, highlight scores, first half stats, and analysis. The AP poll powered by Ram Trucks while the top two sit idly by Auburn down 14-6 to Florida on CBS. Surprised? Yeah, that's a big deal. That really is a big deal. Florida's defense proven to be as good as they looked against Miami in that opener at least so far I got to admit I was wrong about them I thought the best defense on the field in that game would be the Auburn defense so the Air Force Falcons settle for a couple of field goals 42 and officially 40 from Jake Conkey who's out for the kickoff here Chance Warren Maybe doesn't often run kickoffs back, but that was in that perfect in-between spot. And they'll benefit, get some good field position here. Ball spotted at the 33. The Air Force football community suffered a tragic loss earlier this week. Their mascot, Aurora, died Wednesday at the age of 23. A rare white-faced Gyra Falcon, the Academy's longest-serving mascot in school history, gifted by its associate of graduates in 2000. Only 3% of all Falcons are Gyra Falcons. 1% of those are white. She did not fly football games, but was brought to most away games to greet fans. And that decal on the helmet today in memory of Aurora. High snap out of the gun, Perry. Lakota Wills right on him. Wills, an outstanding football player, leads the team in tackles for loss and sacks. Plus, these option offenses are so predicated on timing. And you could say, you could see Perry is just a little bit late on really getting going there. That little, that lack of timing is what kills that play because the guy that would normally be behind a play is going to be right on it for the tackle. Four passes, 112 yards. Randy, that's what Navy averages per game on the season. Yeah, well, they threatened. They really did. They, they brought in Billy Ray Stutzman, their wide receiver coach from Hawaii. Little run and shoot. And they're shooting. Inside run here. And that'll hammer to around the 37, <laughs> gain of about three. DeMonte meets the stop. No third and six coming. 114 clock rolling. In a conventional <laughs> offense, this is where you would look absolutely for a pass. Right. Still, I think there's a pretty good chance here you're going to get a pass out of Navy. A lot of it will, will be depending on what kind of pad, what kind of space are these receivers given. Well, they're given a lot, it looks like right here. Perry changing things up, play clock draining down. They have a couple of timeouts, they'll call one. Ken Niamatololo has one left. And Malcolm Perry, there was wonder about his shoulder entering the game. Wonder no more. Well, if anything else, he's loosened up because he's cranked open a couple of pretty good passes. Two on a rope. One big long one with some nice pass, some nice touch, especially that one right there. He dropped in front of the safety behind the corner. He completed barely more than 30% of his passes last year. He's perfect in four tries today. You know, don't discount the fact that Ivan Jasper, you know, and he had some family problems last year with his son, Jaron Jasper, who got the heart transplant. He wasn't there every meeting, every moment, every day. He has spent every waking minute football wise with this young quarterback. And I think between he and Kenny Niamatololo, you can really see it in this young quarterback's performance. 
Right, but Jasper was where he needed to be last year and the same this year. And Perry, he's right behind his blockers. He's going to be short by a little more than a yard. 36 seconds. And what does Air Force do armed with three timeouts? They've already called that timeout. And Troy Calhoun has two left. He freezes the clock. Let's check in with Sheehan Stanwick Birch, an injury update. Well, guys, we saw Jackson Perkins, the defensive end, number 96, leave the field. He was very heavily walking gingerly. He went to the medical tent. He will not return. He's got a lower leg injury, and they've iced it up, and he's leaving the field with crutches. Well, thank you, Sheehan. You're paying for that young man. I think these games are just so heightened on each side, right, Randy, to, to be forced out for any reason excruciating independently. Yeah, you could tell being around them, you know, that the team Air Force earlier this week talking to their head coach Troy Calhoun the other day at the Navy facility. This just means so much. This commander in chief trophy, it's hard to put it into words in the context of a college football player's season or even game, how much that trophy means to these three schools. Air Force one of the best at blocking kicks. And that's kicks of all sort. Looks like they're gunning for Owen White here. Especially from the left. And flags right at the snap. It was only fourth and two as it stood. Prior to the snap, false start, number 31. Offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Austin Talbert loving on specials there. There's certain things in special teams that kind of raise the hair on the back of your neck if, if you're an offensive player or a coach and that's groups of guys. When you see groups of guys there's going to be stunts and games that could open up you know somebody to get to the ball and one group of guys is this group right here on the left side of the defense. Keep an eye on that area. White rugby's it a bit. Peterson watches it bound. Oh, and it takes a very friendly Navy roll. Air Force inside of its own 10 after a 54 yard punt. So, what do you do with that field position? Two timeouts in 23 seconds. Can you say Neil? <laughs> I think you get into the old victory formation with your quarterback with the two wings right behind him. You kneel down, you go inside, you look at the pictures from the first half, and if you're Troy Calhoun, you, you try to craft something that works, especially something to open up the passing game to help your running game out. Well, their formation tells it all, right? They've got Peterson, the receiver, excuse me, Waters, the receiver, incredibly deep. And then there's the knee. And it's going to be the first time all year, Randy, that Air Force is held without a touchdown in the first half. And credit Brian Newberry's defense, the defensive coordinator at Navy. They have been really aggressive and they haven't paid the price when it's been one on one they've made the tackles and there have been zero wide open receivers for Air Force. Zero seconds halftime hits Air Force will have the ball when the second half gets underway. After the break our CBS Sports Network studio in New York the Ram halftime report Brent Stover Houston Nutt Kevin Carter it's Armed Services Saturday. Watching the CBS Sports Network Halftime Report powered by Ram Trucks. Welcome in, Brent Stover, Kevin Carter, Houston Nut, 14 6 Navy at home at the break. Your thoughts? Go. You know, these two teams are going to play hard. They're gonna, it's going to go all the way to the fourth quarter. Malcolm Perry, been a little bit banged up. I love the effort, fighting through a little injury. He's four for four right now. Watch these throws here to Michael Cooper. Good job. It looks like a little play action right here. Drops back, a little wheel right down the sideline. Michael Cooper, good job for set up a touchdown. Come right back again. Same thing. Play action, it's well protected. He drops it in here on the post corner route. Michael Cooper again, big play. Yeah, that Air Force defense not getting it done right now. And conversely, for, 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 for Navy, we, we see them having trouble. Brian Newberry, the defense coordinator for Navy, is doing an excellent job right now. They're not able to get the ball to Taven Bordeaux and, and K Caden Rimsburg on that, that uh, all that, what's, what do you call it? That flex bone flex option bone. they yeah. got there. Not able to get them to the ball to them in space. It'll be interesting second half. Perry, 4 of 4 for 112. It's 14 6 and 8. 14 6 in our game. Second half thought here, Kevin? Only 69 yards on the ground for Air Force. 
Brian Newberry, the defense coordinator for Navy, doing a really good job. They got to figure something out. Get Taven Burdo, Caden Rimsburg involved in this game. Rimsburg's your man. <laughs> this game will go to the fourth quarter all the way to the end. Who's going to stop the run the best and who's going to run and protect the ball the best? Who will it be? Who wins this game when the dust settles? My thoughts go with Air Force, but right now the execution says Navy. Air Force. Houston Nutt, Kevin Carter, I'm Brent Stover. Second half from Annapolis comes your way right after this. This has been the CBS Sports Network Halftime Report, powered by Ram Trucks. From the sailing capital of the world, Annapolis, Maryland, it's Air Force Navy, 14 to 6 Navy. The halftime edge. John Sadak alongside the Hall of Famer in Randy Cross. What stood out to you, partner? Well, I think the execution of Navy once they kind of got going. And Air Force executed pretty good a couple of drives. But I think the defense of Navy has really taken Hammond and the Air Force Academy out of their game. So I'm interested to see how they come out at halftime and how they address those problems. Because Navy got that interception. Perry's. Passing has been right on, just point perfect the way he's thrown the ball. And when they've had to have the running game, it's been there for them with their execution. When they've had the numbers, and here they have the numbers. Yards per play, they're just about doubling up Air Force. The rush yards, the fewest and a half for each team this year. They entered one and two running the football in the country. But they also each entered top 20 in rushing defense and each intimately familiar with the option and therefore how to disrupt it, right? And, and also time of possession. You saw where Air Force has had the ball almost three minutes more than Navy. That's something that's usually on the other on the shoes are usually on the other foot. Air Force had won the toss and elected to defer, so the Falcons have the ball to begin the second. We'll get a fair catch and we'll get word as flags flutter. And it's all the way back by the kickoff. Ken Diamantololo doesn't look happy with the body language. You know, that's that's part of the area where it could be an offside, so they'll tack a few extra yards on top of that 25-yard line. Offside, number 33, kicking team. That penalty is enforced from the 25-yard line, five yards. First down, Air Force. Let's go downstairs. She and Stanwick Birch had word with each head coach. Well, guys, Air Force coach Troy Calhoun said they got to get better at holding the ball, making first downs, and defensively, they need to defend Navy's pass as they had many big plays. And for Navy, Coach Niamatololo said his message to his team was simple. They got to finish. It's a battle out there. They must finish. Yards per play, six and a half to just under four, Navy's favor. And they're about four. Diego Fago denies with the contact. The Air Force, it felt like, Randy, we talked a bit off mic. For Hammond, there was only one drive where he seemed to exude confidence and poise. It yielded in that second field goal. Well, more of those first down plays that are gaining around four will give him more confidence and will give this offense more rhythm. He can be a prolific passer, but that balance necessary. And there, they're able to cut it back. He lost the go. He might lose the ball. Kinley aids him out of bounds around the 25. And the biggest play for Air Force on the day, 42 by the QB. Watch the pursuit going this way of the Navy defense. And Hammond hesitates, comes here, and then cuts back across it. That was beautiful. That was great execution. Berto able to help him, too. The first down, Navy showing blitz. Paul Carruthers getting a lot of time. He got the start, the senior. And inside, only about a yard. Let's take a look at what Air Force amassed in the first. You see the two field goal drives. I mean, finishing is something that Troy Calhoun's offense has not done, and that's something I'm sure they talked about in the locker room. It's one thing to move the ball. You got to finish the drive, and finishing is touchdowns. Finishing is not field goals. On second down, Hammond looking for Sanders, knocked away. Michael McMorris with perfect coverage underneath, and Cameron Kinley brought some pressure. That's pretty close to offensive pass interference. 
Great body position by Morris. Because he's right there underneath. There's nowhere that he can go. Hammond's trying to block it in front, drop it right down in front of him, but Sanders can't get to the ball. Third down has been deadly on the day. Air Force entered, converting 60% tops in the country. Two of ten, Paul Carruthers gets the QB. Coming from that inside linebacker position, Fago's going to come. Carruthers is going to come late. Watch him read and then go and draw a bead on, on Hammond. Once Hammond hits that spot and can't throw the ball immediately, he's as good as set. So here's Jake Conkey trying a career long 48 yarder. Conkey. Drills it. Three for three on field goals and his longest make of his career. No elevation at sea level. He's got the distance and Air Force gets points after the big loss of seven, a conversion for three. Only 70 days to go in the countdown to America's game, the Army-Navy game presented by USAA on CBS Sports. This game got underway with a coin toss courtesy of the Secretary of Defense, Dr. Mark T. Esper, a proud Army graduate, and he's downstairs with Sheehan. Thanks, John. That's right, you're an Army graduate. Tell us about what these rivalry games mean. Oh, they're fantastic games. They bring out the best of uh, both schools, and it's full of emotion, so you can never, never predict who will win when you have a game like this. If you could deliver a message to the guys that are on this field, one day they're really against each other right now, but one day they'll be teammates. What would you say to them? Well, you know, MacArthur famously said, upon the fields of friendly strife are sown the seeds, and upon other fields on other days will bear the fruits of victory. So winning today is all about winning tomorrow as well. The skills you build today, you'll carry on with you for, through a decade or two of service to the military. Thank you so much. What a great statement. It's great to have you on. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Sheehan. Thank you. Appreciate that. And ain't she beautiful, Randy? Look at that flag wow. fly. I got to get that for my screensaver. Yeah, you can feel can, the. Can I get one that moves? Get that ripple effect? Yeah, I, I got to have the ripple. I'm, I'm, I pronounce it GIF, by the way. <laughs> And here's a chance of kick return. Chance Warren. He's got speed. And Navy's got nearly the 40. Oh. Lost it out of bounds with contact. Navy sideline erupting. 25 yards to return it. Did he fair catch this? Watch his hands. Yeah, a little in between there. Is that just shaping up to make the grab? I'm not sure. I it would look like the initial move with his arms was to call a fair catch. And you hear the boos they just played on the video board. That video where you saw some contact out of bounds, it looked like that was momentum of the play, though. Let the boy Navy has owned the game and only leads 14 to 9. Smith right in the Fafita. Those massive paws at 6 1, 3 30. What did Navy do down the stretch in the first half? Touchdown, touchdown, punt. The most important thing is that finish. When they've gotten the ball in position, they finished with a touchdown. Now and remember. You know, you know, early on it's not a big deal, but then you start getting in the fourth quarter, those settling for threes, those extra points, those extra four points start adding up. Remember the matchup, though, a couple of years ago, an all-time thriller, when Navy blew three different three-touchdown leads, trailed with two minutes left. And Perry rumbles into Kyle Johnson. Forward progress stalled at around the 46. It'll be third and four. Armed Forces football proudly sponsored by USAA. Well, third downs here, Randy. Perry's been up to the task. I've said a few times today, I mean, normally this would right, right be on the cusp of being a passing down at third and four. Got the different lo different formation, little stacks on the outside. They run Smith, and Air Force was not duped in the least. Furious harm to Monte Meeks delivered to the first blow. 
They tried to spread them out, and Air yeah. Force said, uh -uh. Spread them out, showed them the stacked receivers, and Ken Niamatololo's fullback got a face full of linebackers. That was some really nice White defense by Air Force. Fedulum gave some of the help there. Jeremy Fedulum said, physically, I think there's always something about service academies, hard set, nose to the ground mentality. In that way, I think we're all very similar. Owen White, remember the kick block game, a huge part of what Air Force can do. White, excellent hang. Peterson, the fair grab. Well, Air Force will get its second possession of the second half after a 35 yard punt. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. By the Ram 1500, Motor Trends 2019 Truck of the Year. And by Chick-fil-A's new mac and cheese. It's both cheesy and crispy on top. Need we say more? Some of the pageantry of the day, the 52nd collision of Navy and Air Force. The running game for Air Force, 42 yards on a plunge by the QB, DJ Hammond, last possession. 27 other rushes for 64 total yards. Could the trick play be coming? Hammond the pitch. Right there, Michael McMorris thwarts Benjamin Waters back to the 14, loss of five. Attack, attack, attack. This defense attacks McMorris from the outside, attacks right into the body of the running back. Why not? That's just beautiful defense. I mean, the play has to be called the right way by the coordinator upstairs. But McMorris executed that just perfectly. Never bought any of the action, any of the window dressing, just went right for the runner. What Brian Newberry and the overhaul defensive staff have done with basically the same personnel year to year. Amazing. Hammond over the middle, a little behind his man off the hand of Sanders. Fockman was in the area, but Hammond has been off. And, and not a lot. He had an open receiver, but you can throw a receiver open and you can throw a receiver closed. You put that in front of the receiver, you're throwing him open. You throw it behind him when he's running, you're throwing him closed. The team, two of ten on third down, entered 60% on the season on third down. Hammond with a blitz on. He's down! The second sack of the day, Jacob Springer. So you're worried about blitz, huh? Are you worried about this? Are you worried about this? Well, you better be worried about this coming from the outside. Manned up on the slot, turns into a blitzer. There is no one to account. It's not the first blitzer that gets you with this defense. It's the second one, and the second one's job is to wreck havoc. The average yards to gain on third down has been eight for Air Force. The punt from Charlie Scott, Garrett Wynn. Watches it plop right at midfield. A 40 yard punt. The Navy defense has been deadly. The second breakout of the chain today. As we celebrate college football's 150 years, a look at the great Joe Bellino, the Winchester Rifle, 1960 Heisman Trophy winner. Finished with 834 rushing yards, 264 receiving, 18 touchdowns. Also averaged over 47 yards as the punter. College Football Hall of Famer lost in March. His family part of an honoring on the field surrounding his number that's now etched at the 27-yard line. His number 27 forever memorializing one of Navy's greats. Yeah, what an amazing era for this football program with Bellino and then a few years behind him, Roger Staubach again winning the Heisman. Part of the heyday of Navy football. 
Oh, they fooled him. They thought Nelson Smith had the ball. Malcolm Perry, chipped by Jeremy Fedulum and Kyle Johnson, gets to the 40-yard line. It'll be second and six, and Perry wincing as he slowly gets up. Well, that's the reality. If you're a fan of this football team, your quarterback will never be wince-free. If you're expecting him to get out of a game without multiple bags of ice on his body, he's just not big enough. You know, not to take hits that are going to really affect him. They want him to get down, but he's also their best ball carrier. He's showing a very alert feel for the play clock today. Now following his blocks, Perry to the edge. Chipped out of bounds. Helped out of play by Kyle Johnson. He rips off 13 to move the chains. And end results, that's just good blocking on the outside. Watch the blocks by the receivers and the A-backs. Right there, the, the great chop block, cut block that cleared out the outside. Watch his hand, watch the hands of the defender get up in his face. Does he get poked in the eye? And that was the prior right play. There. Yeah, that was the one where he got up a little slow. Navy gets right up the gut of the Air Force defense. Lakota Wills, part of a group that got trucked to the 21. It'll be second and three. Nelson Smith, a furious drive. Yeah, I expect Air Force's defense here to take a chance. Right. Blitz, stunt, something to slow this roll of Navy's offense. Got to take a chance. Only three game takeaways on the year. That's been an underscored point of emphasis for Troy Calhoun. Donaldson and Wills deny there at the 20, third and two. And they did slant Fafita right into that run. You slant those 330 pounds plus the scraping linebackers. It's kind of hard for Nelson Smith to make much of a dent in that. At the 20, needing two. Two of six today on third down. And Air Force all sorts of confused, but it's Navy that calls the timeout here. Timeout, Navy. This is their first charge. 30 seconds in length. They'll talk it over tomorrow. The NFL on CBS brings you a full slate of games. Brady leads the Pats into the nation's capital. Raven Steelers renew their AFC North rivalry. All begins with JB and the guys in the NFL today at noon Eastern on CBS. Steelers Ravens, a rather heated rivalry. They haven't met as many times as Air Force and Navy have. The last eight all even. You know, if you're Air Force, you're fully expecting this to be a third or fourth down. You're going to go for it. But just remember, Navy has something they haven't had in a while. And that's a pretty accurate big leg kitch kicker in Bijan Nichols. So it wasn't always you were passing up points. And I think that's something that Troy Calhoun and his staff have to take into consideration is they can really be in a position where you got to consider the points you're not taking if you're Ken Niamatololo. And Nichols has been brilliant, the freshman. Perry trying to make it. Moody does get some help. The bounce touchdown. <laughs> 20 yards for Malcolm Perry. So, John, exactly where in that run should he have gone down? <laughs> there is the problem when you're telling your quarterback. You know, we've got to, you got to be smart. When you got to give up, you, you got to get down. Well, which one of those tackles shouldn't he break? He is impossible to tackle one on one because of the quickness and the way he can dart side to side. Well, from talking about Nichols and a possible field goal try if they didn't convert on third down, instead, the third touchdown. Point after. Right down the middle. Malcolm Perry, the maestro of the offense. The pass plays in the first half. He springs free in the second. And the push ups from Lands on Far. Time now for our Chick A fan camp. And the grassy seating, Randy. Uh, heavily occupied, a lot of the young ones soaking up the scene today. Lots and lots. 
Somewhere down there are my two granddaughters and my daughter Kelly and her husband Dirk. But this hill, you know, usually there's a lot of grass. Now you, all you can see is blanket and people. Fourth biggest crowd of the history of the stadium. And a lot of future fans on each side, part of it. J.R. Osborne, the kick. Benjamin Waters lets it fly. Let's go downstairs to Sheehan Stanwick Birch. On Sunday, September 15th, Richard and Jan Barry, the parents of Navy Associate AD of Sports Medicine Jim Barry, were involved in a car accident after attending the Navy ECU game. Jan Barry suffered fractured ribs and a concussion. Tragically, Richard Barry passed away as a result of his injuries. Richard and Jan had recently celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. I spoke with Jim earlier this week, and he said his father was a wonderful husband and father and was also an amazing teacher and mentor to many music educators. This is such a sad time for Jim and Navy football. Our condolences go out to the entire Barry family. Appreciate that, she and Gerard Sanders, the big hookup, flag down. Can understand the emotion for Jim Barry. Pass interference, number 87. Offense, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. Goes on Cade Waggis back. And by the way, while tremendous loss felt by the Berries, some big news still to come as uh, Jim's wife Casey expecting their first child due in early December, right around Army Navy. And prayers for him and his family. Ken Niamatololo told us he tried to be as normal as possible to bring that normalcy to his longtime friend. Hammond, backside pressure, floats it up, caught! Benjamin Waters! Evan Fuckman brings him down, the best throw of the day by D.J. Hammond. A nice pass by Hammond, a pass interference, backs him up 15 yards, and they give him the protection to throw another one. Really, really nice execution by Air Force. This is what makes this passing game so dangerous. And here comes Tempo, dangerous ball. Remsburg thrown for a loss. After that 52-yard bomb, Michael McMorris gets the TFL. McMorris again just draws dead center aim on the running back and takes him down easily. McMorris showing some real sure tackling out there at that cornerback spot. But Randy, you called it while we were away. Yeah. That it wouldn't be pressing if Hammond and company came out firing with the pass game. They've got to keep augmenting the pass. If they're going to score touchdowns, it's going to be augmenting with the pass. Play fit to Remsburg. Hammond. Oh, Sanders, a nice move. Floated ball incomplete off his hands. Fockman was there. Fockman was there, but the ball was there. That's one Sanders tomorrow in films. And then tonight on the plane, he's going to see that one a couple of times with his eyes closed. The numbers for Hammond today, 52 of those came out one pass this drive, but here's third and 13. Average yard a game for Air Force on third down, Randy, has been nearly 10. Now here's the, here's the question, do you blitz? Do you go all out, tight formation? Yes. Hammond connects, looks to be just short. Daniel Morris's first grab, tackled by Fockman, what do you do? I, I don't think there's any question, you go for this. It's fourth and three. And you get right up on the line of scrimmage. You're waggling, you're waggling in a play from the sideline. You've got a good offensive line. You've got excellent in the past offensive execution with the running game. You go for it here. Sanders is back, matched up with McMorris. Hammond locked that side, throws it to him one on one, incomplete. And the Navy defense holds on fourth down. They take their best shot with their best two players, Hammond and Sanders, and it's not enough because of the pressure of the front of Navy and their excellent coverage in the back end by the Navy defensive backs. There wasn't much of a choice. That was the spot he was going to go to, and that wasn't open, and the ball was thrown short. 
Air Force entered a minus four in turnover margin. But Jim Cal or Troy Calhoun rather spoke at great length about fourth down stops critical in the loss to Boise critical in the win against San Jose State and said they are a huge part that should be factored with turnover. Margin. Most most defensive coaches would consider those turnovers. Now, I'll be honest most offensive coaches consider those turnovers too. Smith stood up by Jordan Jackson Malcolm Perry's had an amazing game. You know we, we talked about his shoulder that was banged up last week. Well it hasn't been a factor. He's had the ball long he's had the touch and he's had the feet and the wiggle to finally get open. He's had a few runs where he's threatened to do that but he finally did on that last possession. Just outside of the top five and rushing yards the Navy lure. There's that double stack again another time Smith this time he slips past him. Shielding the football Nelson Smith. Trey Bond Grant Teal take him out. He rips off 38. Well when the fullback does that it's usually for three reasons one two three two guards and a center inside watch it look at those blocks. Wow that was really a beautiful job on the in the inside especially by David Forney the left guard he did an excellent job turning out that defensive end Isaac Ruas in at fullback Smith has been the bell cow today but needs a gasp of air Perry tries to cut it up lost his footing so but he gets hammered Nakoa Powley and Grant Teal part of the puck. He made a one second down Nelson Smith after a very brief respite back in but Perry's, Malcolm Perry's, Perry's on, on his ground. back. Yeah. Well the athletic trainers out to tend to Perry. Fast as he went down it could be as simple as getting the wind knocked out of you on that play. Because having had that a couple of times happen it does have a. Uh, now he's loosening that right arm though. Seemed to point to that shoulder twice. He injured that right throwing shoulder against Memphis last week. Well, he took a pretty good shot in the side of the head as they were finishing him off there. He left the game multiple times last week against Memphis due to injury and was not on the field at the game's end. The freshman Perry Olsen was part of it. Let's take a look. Last week, Thursday night, under the lights against Memphis, this was the most violent of the hits. Yeah, I mean, when you get tackled and then kind of finished off with a belly flop, and your shoulders on the ground like that. That's shoulder and collarbone material when you're in that position. So here's the true freshman Perry Olson. Handing off to Smith. He gets stood up at the 26. Gain of a couple. DeMonte Meeks another stop. Does Malcolm Perry come back here? He does. Now Perry Olson off. Brief breather for Malcolm Perry, but Randy, his throws didn't look the same when he came back against Memphis in similar circumstances. Now you're about to find out if that was his shoulder that was bothering him, or he got a little bit of the a little bit of the wind knocked out of him. First time they pass out of that double stack and off the pump fake. Tries to run and hops out of bounds. And that's what's been coached into him some there, right? Grant Teal helps him out of play. Yeah, that's taking care of yourself. And that's also being smart with the ball. There was nothing down the field. Don't just stand there and try to create something. Get some yards and get out of bounds. So up 21 9, Ken Niamatololo sends his place kicker, BJ Nichols, out. This is the luxury they haven't had in the past, though. Air Force would love to have a guy. That you feel this confidence that you could go from 51, 52 yards for a field goal. Does he have the accuracy? They know he has the leg. Here from 41. Nichols hooks it well wide. Nowhere near the uprights. And Air Force will get the ball after a bad boot. Just when you build somebody up. And you How wonder does that happen. You wonder what this game means to Nichols though. His uncle Chuck Peterson spent nearly two decades at Air Force. He was under Fisher to Berry from 1990 through 2006 nearly the last decade as the offensive coordinator right before Troy Calhoun took over. Yeah, and most of these coaches here 
and Air Force draw their DNA back to that Fisher DeBerry period. So it's uh, it means a lot. That's a name very familiar in the Air, Fa Air Force football lore. And let's see Troy Calhoun played for. Pressure on. Throwing for his life in Remsburg. Shakes McMorris. He's got speed. Pass Brennan. Springer chips him, and he's finally knocked down Carter Bankston after 30 yards. Well, we talk about the wiggle of Perry. Here's a little wiggle for you. That's just a little flip out into the flat. Try to make something happen. McMorris, who's been so good tackling, he can't get a piece. Brennan can't get a piece. After the fourth or fifth try, you got to start thinking maybe there's no piece to be had. He's a 4 3 40 guy, and that was pretty alert by Hammond, too, with Fago steaming right toward him. Inside run that's been thwarted largely on the day. Jackson Pittman gets the stop, gain of a couple, second and eight. It's only 21 to 9, Randy. Yeah, you talk about the history of this game. This kind of a lead, 12 points, huh, that's nothing. That's why Navy can't sit on it. And Air Force can't panic. They got plenty of time. They got a whole quarter plus 35 seconds. When they met here two years ago, Air Force scored three touchdowns in the fourth quarter to rally back from down 21 and take the lead. Blitz on. Hammond hit as he throws. Flag out incomplete. But what about the contact between Sanders yeah, was there and Kinley? Was there contact or a grab somewhere in there around the 30-yard line? Cam Kinley was in coverage there. Mountain West crew, a referee Michael Vandervelde. We've already seen Air Force one time get caught for a, called for a pick downfield on Wagastack. There are fouls, two fouls on the play, both on the defense. Holding number three, defense. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer, low hit on the passer, number 51. Defense, that penalty is enforced. 15 yards, automatic first down. That's Kinley and Carruthers, respectively. Well, the, the foul on Kinley, you see right there, grabbing the arm on Sanders. And the crowd doesn't like this, but you know, folks, whether it's at the college football level or the pro level, you can't hit a quarterback in the knees anymore. Period. End of report. Any questions? I mean, you just can't hit a guy down low like that. Critical penalty, fourth of the game on Navy. The zigzag run by Birdo. Denzel Polk, who came on for Jackson Perkins, gets the hit, gain of two. Well, the final seconds fade. Just a good feel, good bounce to this drive, good rhythm to this drive from Air Force. This is the offense we saw last week against San Jose State. Through three quarters, you're watching Armed Services Saturday on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Twenty one nine Navy the Air Force team that averages almost 30 points through three held to three field goals and we say hello to the troops in service rooting on Navy special purpose Marine and root not Air Force and Cutter the deployed service members at the Air Base Malcolm Perry stunned some by contact came back out of the field Air Force on the drive. Hammond well placed football connects with Benjamin Waters and he gets twisted out of bounds by Nizer Cromarty 19 yards great play call great play call right there by coach Calhoun and his staff going with the pass second and eight they were blitzing the run 
Here's first and goal. Here's a loss of yards. Christian Mallard, Diego Fago, part of the pile. Speaking of blitzing the run, how about Fago coming from the backside? Just goes airborne, doing a little Troy Polamalu. Just laying out, going after that running back with the blitz. Denzel Polk in there as well, who has filled in admirably for Jackson Perkins. Sanders matched up one on one, top of the screen. On the roll. Hammond fakes the pitch. He knew the harm was coming for others and Jacob Springer, third and goal. You know, Fago had a shot at Hammond. Hammond completely juked him out of his socks. That's how that's one way to eliminate a tackler that's in the right spot is you just make him miss. This four down area. And if it's if it's four and fourth and one, yeah. If it's not, you take the points, kick it, you'll get the ball back. It's only 12 points. And that puts the import on this play then. Third and goal. Pressured. Hit as he throws. Sanders incomplete. He cradled it with the right arm out of bounds against Kinley. Wow, what a nice job inside getting pressure on Hammond. Kinley does a nice job, but this story is inside. Look at Fago and what he fights through two blockers. He and Walker get right there in on Hammond and cause that throw to just be off. The man they call the wrecking ball. Conkey hasn't missed here from 26. His three makes from 40 plus. Conkey. And it's good. Jay Conkey, four for four today, seven for seven on the season for Troy Calhoun. Four field goals for the Falcons, 21-12. Armed services Saturday, 21-12 Navy. Tonight, 10.30 Eastern, late night college football action. Undefeated, number 16, Boise State takes on UNLV on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. The Sackmaster Supreme stud, the name of the position for Curtis Weaver. He's got some stud hair game as well. He's not the only Weaver in the West Coast that's having a heck of a year at linebacker. The other one at Cal's having a pretty good season himself. Yeah, the Navy defense today has been outstanding. They have been. They have been in attack mode all day long and uh, not allowing Air Force to finish these drives. Well, you can't tell you how important that is. If you're going to give up points, you're giving them up in dribs and drabs. There are no floods. You go a long ways towards winning football games that way. Seven tackles for loss. Chance Warren trying to make a play. Not advised. Air Force swings him down for the latest on the Navy QB, Malcolm Perry. Let's check in with Sheena. Well, guys, when Malcolm Perry came off the field injured, he was just working on his shoulders, doing some stretching, rolling his shoulders back. I was told he has a shoulder bruise, but he's good to go back in. Appreciate that, Sheehan. And of course, as she mentioned in her earlier report, Perry was somewhat limited in practice, even with the longer preparation time after a Thursday night game last week. Well, we sat down with him for about 15 minutes. He looked stiff sitting in a chair. He did. And that was on Thursday. So that's, you know, that's a week after the fact. Perry. Decides to keep and runs into the big bodies, including Jordan Jackson, who was highly coveted by Navy on the recruiting trail and had probably his best career game of the matchup last year when he had three and a half tackles for loss, all that led to three and outs. But Perry's passing game has been a difference today. It really has been. And, and you got to take your hats off to the Air Force defense, especially on first down. Navy's won second and third on several occasions, but primarily on first down, Air Force had a good job of blunting this offense. Perry gets an extra few. Lakota Wills hits him on the ankle. So he gets about three. It'll be third and six. Ivan Jasper moved downstairs this year, Randy. First time in over a decade for that dialogue with Perry. Yeah, just literally more hands on with his quarterback. He sees him. He sits with him on the sideline. 
the execution of that quarterback will go a long way here on third down. Air Force dreaming of a takeaway. They go gun. They've shown this formation a few times today. That's been a wrinkle. Here's the pressure. Perry tries to step up. Ball free. He picks it up. Out runs Jackson. And he picks up the first down. 15 yards from near disaster to success. And he's slow to get up. When you draw that up in the playbook, how do you draw up the, the fumble? Now, when he was tackled, look, he comes down on that right elbow, right shoulder. So his shoulder is really bothering him after this play. The ball gets knocked out of his grip. He's able to pick it up again. And he's holding the ball in that right hand. But that can be a real problem when you land on that elbow, upper arm area. That tugs on the shoulder. That means time comes calling again for Perry Olsen, who Ivan Jasper raved about this week. He said, as a freshman, he has taken to the position like nobody since Keenan Reynolds, who, of course, sprung out of the scene when he worked in relief due to injury against Air Force. Go to the full back ball. Loose! Air Force has it! That's the coach's nightmare. You change quarterbacks. What happens the first play? You change quarterbacks. You don't ride with the center. The ball's in just a different spot. And it ends up on the ground. Watch the exchange with the back with Nelson Smith. That ball is being removed. Now they're going to look at that again. Was it coming out before Nelson Smith hit the ground? Here's a good angle. Is it out? Yes, it's out. That's a turnover. One more time. Just take a look here. Here's the ball right there. It is out, and he is not on the ground. That's a fumble. That was not free by Fafita. Grant Donaldson, who Troy Calhoun told us would see more action this week, has been great against service academies. The recovery. Third giveaway for Navy. Toss play. Remsburg. Outnumbered. Polk there with Brennan down at the 35. Only a couple. Yeah, there, there's several junction points in an offense like this. There's a junction between the center and the guard, the center and the quarterback. There's a junction between the quarterback and the fullback. And you see there the junction between the quarterback and the flip out to the back. And there's potential for turnover at every single one of those junctions. And it came after the freshman was pushed into action. Hammond. One foot and wide open. Able to connect. That's a catch. Joshua Stoner. And now they say incomplete. One footed throwing back. Yep, ball hit the ground. Bounces back up. That's when it's caught. It's a good call right on the field by our officials. He's wide open, Randy, and that's happened so often for Hammond today. You know, I, I don't say I don't want to say he's feeling the pressure, feeling the, the rush, but he's hurrying when he really doesn't have to on occasion. He's not getting the pressure to throw the ball that quickly. Third down. Hammond on the roll. Throws underneath. Waggis pack. Second effort. Did he go out of bounds? Where are they going to spot it? Looks like at the 24. That'll be a gain of 11 to move the chains. Jarius Warren helped him out of play. There's a good example of rushing, going outside, getting the rush, and then getting the completion, throwing on the run. That's a big conversion on third down. Had been two of 13 on the day. Here's the blitz. Hammond knows it. Quickly gets it out to the sideline, Gerard Sanders. Now there's some rhythm to Hammond again. Yeah, there is. And there's a little bit of a, a, a problem with the rush. I don't want to say a problem, but the problem's for Navy, not for Air Force, because they're running into each other a little bit. Watch the blitzes by the safety and the linebacker. That safety gets there. I mean, he makes a sack, if not for Fago knocking him off. And here, a nice 
inside run, shifting shoulders from Birdo. Kinley and Fachman dispatch of him at about the 10, so it's first and goal. Personnel change, uh, DeAndre Williams in, Denzel Polk out. This is an offense and a quarterback for Air Force that's got a pretty good swagger, a lot of confidence. And right now, they're getting that swagger back, and that's bad news for the Navy defense. Hammond follows. Shoulders. Maybe try to jar it free for Go and Carruthers. Take him out. Some chipping and arguing thereafter. Second and goal. Now this is getting down to nitty gritty time. There's still a lot of time. Well, four times Air Force has had to settle for a field goal. You don't have to be a math whiz to figure out this is a pretty important time if you can make them settle for another field goal. Third trip to the red zone. The flip. Stelter. And he is down just a yard shy, Cam Kinley. Third down and goal. Yeah, it's a beautiful play. You flip that ball out there like that, you're isoing your running back against defenders that are moving sideways and don't have the momentum to stop you. This is definite four down territory. Hammond. Movement. Flags out. However short and goal that was, it's half as short and goal now. Offside, number 99, defense, jumped into the neutral zone, causing the, causing the offensive player to react half the distance to the goal, third down. And goes on Jackson Pittman. He just run Hammond right over, right? Hammond's a big, powerful kid. I don't think there's any doubt. You form a wedge with your two guards in your center, and you clear out what's ever in that wedge, and you clear the room for your quarterback to get this Heck, you only need about a foot. Hammond could do that in his sleep. 6'2", 210. Hammond follows. Air Force believes it has it. And Hammond stopped short. Fourth and goal. I, I was pretty sure. He about got it in. Let's see where the ball is. Yep. Did you see the ball he, he, over the top of the pile? They're going to look at that upstairs, and they're going to see a touchdown. Uh, Hammond certainly believes that, too. I thought I saw that flash of the ball, and that's all it was. It was a quick flash by Hammond. Right. Stop it right here. Watch his arm right there. That's it. That's over. That's six points. Third and goal, less than a yard. Ruling on the field that he was short. And the ball is right there. There's the goal. That's easily in. Yeah, that's in by a good bit. A replay official, yeah. Tim England. It's even more definitive from the other side. There's a Mountain West crew, referee Michael Vandervelde getting a look down to the field. Here's the reaction from the QB and Hammond saying, come on. I pierced the plane. That's a touchdown. Why aren't those arms up? Yeah, this is a great kid, too. Hammond is one confident athlete. He will tell you about it if you win. After reviewing the play, the runner extends the ball across the goal line. Touchdown, Air Force. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to seven minutes, 38 seconds. Seven minutes, 38 seconds. First touchdown of the day for the Falcons. And the first chance to hear just how many Falcon fans are in the stadium. Oh, there's a lot. You mentioned how the proximity to Washington, D.C. and the number of Air Force fans in our capital. Good number of them here in attendance and in their Air Force get garb. 
Now conkey has been perfect on field goals on the year, but he's had three extra points blocked. He's also straight missed one. And movement up front. Offside, number 54. Defense jumped into the neutral zone. Half the distance to the goal. Try for point. Diego Fago, kick unit remains on the field. Yeah, you go ahead and you kick this point. Field goal wins it for you either way. You get this extra point. And Conkey connects. Well, all the all the happiness for Air Force started with this fumble right there with Nelson Smith at that junction between he and Perry Olson. And it leads to that play, that reach, that six points. And you got some happy fans in Cutter a long time ahead of us. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Exchange. Welcoming home all honorably discharged veterans to their online shopping benefit. By Rogue. Don't weaken. And by USAA. Insurance, banking, and investments tailored for the military community. Our flyover to F-18F Super Hornets from the Black Lions based out of Naval Air Station Oceana in Virginia Beach. Lieutenant Jason Feeton Metzger, class of 2012 at the Naval Academy, piloted the lead aircraft, wing aircraft. Lieutenant Emily Gong Rixie, class of 2012, lead weapons system officer, Commander Patrick Chunks Baker, class of 2000. Well, what would your handle be? Chunks, Chunks is taken. Well, that's, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> Baldy, that'd be another good one. <laughs> Long-winded. <laughs> well, let's take a look at what happened last time around and Air Force took plumb advantage. Yeah, they've really done an excellent job, Air Force has, is creating their own opportunities. Right there, you see Perry goes out, Smith fumbles the ball, then you have the touchdown, and suddenly now Air Force has finished a drive and is now just two points behind Navy. There is Malcolm Perry under center. Can he throw with that shoulder? He shows the arm. Too strong. Looking for Ryan Mitchell. Yeah, Ryan Mitchell does a really nice job, basically off the break, because he just runs straight up the seam. And, you know, his arm, Perry's got plenty of arm. The problem is always for most option quarterbacks isn't can they get guys open is can they hit them when they're open. Here's four wide shotgun single back. And they run with it. And Air Force felt that coming from Smith. Demonte Meeks gets the stop. A little north of the 27 gain of about two. So make it third down in seven to eight yards. Well the good news is when you get in that formation and they keep a safety high with two DBs on each side. That empties the box out pretty good, and that opens up the run inside. Critical third down coming here. What do you want? I want my big wide receiver. Out of the pistol. They go to the ground. Full head of steam for Nelson Smith. Wills rips him back. He gets the 32, gain of five, fourth and three. The Navy went for it on a fourth down in this area of the field against Memphis did not convert. Yeah, you're going to punt, punt here. I think they missed an opportunity there. I'm kind of surprised they didn't try to pass on that down. Right. They didn't end up punting anyway. And here's an Air Force team with a place kicker that has not missed a field goal all season down two points. Owen White boots it.
And Air Force will have the ball at its own 28 yard line with a little under six minutes to go. 39 yard punt and DJ Hammond back under center. Beautiful scene that belies all the chaos going on down to the field. Let's take a look at our pound for pound brought to you by Rogue Fitness. The turnaround for Air Force quarterback DJ Hammond. Yeah, DJ Hammond started the game out pretty well, but boy, the way he finished on that last drive, smiling and dialing, getting the ball to Remsburg, and then finally reaching the ball over and scoring that touchdown for their first six pointer of the game. Hammond has been a difference maker. Under six minutes, down two points. Hammond off the fake. He knew the hit was coming and he still connects. Benjamin Waters. Brennan helps him out of bounds. 22 yards able to step up. Uh, Hammond, great job. Puts the foot in the ground, knows that rush is coming, that Pittman's going to give him a whack. That's okay, kind of sidearms it, and man, is he accurate with that little sidearm throw. Can you finish again if you're Air Force? Inside Birdo, Fachman is there. We journey to New York for a scoring update. Appreciate that, a tight one in the SEC. Here, an option pass, Chad Stevenson, wide open! Benjamin Waters, the trick play arrives, and Air Force inside of the 10. We're going to bring the receiver around. I'm going to stop it right here. There it is. There's a wide open receiver, and that's not a quarterback hitting him. That's just beautiful execution. Nice play calls up top by Mike Thiessen and Troy Calhoun on the sideline. Completely surprising Navy. That was his first play of the game. The running back with the option pass. Birdo inside of the five. Evan Fuckman another stop. Another from the field level. Looks like a pitch, but something smells funny. Yeah, well, that smell is a trick play. Great throw back. Not bad for a guy that's kind of cold coming off the bench, huh? And the troops pumped up, but Denzel Polk is down. Remember, he came on with Jackson Perkins left with injury. He is the primary backup at defensive end. DeAndre Williams is the third man at that position. And this game has spun dramatically. And when you got an offense that's moving the way that Air Force has this whole game though John it's it's asking for a little mini avalanche when you keep getting field goal field goal field goal field goal drive you start giving up a touchdown then you get on your get, get on your heels. There's your problem right there getting bent over the pile with a leg trapped underneath you. And there is Chance Stevenson, the sophomore, listed at running back, who came on for the first time and threw the option pass. And you know those kind of moments are going to happen, and they can often determine the result. They can determine games. They can turn seasons. I mean, if you can come back and win this, if you're Air Force, you could be on your way to a pretty memorable year. By the same token, if you can hang on and win in your Navy after a disappointing year last year, you could be on your way to a heck of a season. But it's all coming down to this drive and the next one. And Stevenson was a dual threat quarterback at a high school. Hammond a dual threat in his own right. Inside run. Not there. Down to the one. Paul Carruthers the stop. Third down and goal. In almost this exact same spot, it was Hammond 
who was called short down to the field that got the ball extended and broke the plane on review. Well, if they don't get it here, you're going to kick a field goal and go up by six. The best third down team oh, in America five, I'm sorry. entering the day has struggled on the day. Birdo, touchdown! And Air Force storms back in the fourth to take the lead. After four drives that they couldn't finish the drive and had to settle for field goals, two of those in the red zone, they get two red zone penetrations here towards the end of the game, and both drives finish in touchdowns, and it's just nitty-gritty, getting a bruise kind of stuff. They're going to go for two. Troy Calhoun is the offense on the field. They got down there with trick plays, but they scored with good old brute force. What should we be looking at? What's what's the review here? Well, it's a scoring play, so they want to be sure that Birdo got in. You can never really see the ball. That's the problem. Let's see if we can actually see where the ball ends up. Can't see it from there. Couldn't see it from the side from understand. Maybe from the high here you can see it better. There's the ball in Birdo's belly. This is probably the best look. It's in the left shoulder. And his head, I mean, he's going, the, our official coming in, the head linesman there is coming from the angle where you saw his head, which is about a foot or so into the end zone. Pretty much saying, hey, the ball's got to be pretty close to there. That's a touchdown. And you know, there's there's nothing there that could overturn the call on the field. And the call on the field was a touchdown. You know what I keep seeing? The reaction hmm. to Hammond. Here's the call. Reviewing the play. The ruling on the field stands as called. Touchdown. So an Air Force team that began the game 2 of 13 on third down has converted three in a row and a couple of them for touchdowns. Yeah, it's an impressive performance by Troy Calhoun's offense. And it's really, it's a picture in persistence. Because they didn't do what they needed to do pretty frequently in this first three quarters. But boy, I can't tell you, in the last quarter, they have been nails finishing things off. Going for two. The fake, Pittman in his grill, incomplete. And it sits at four. You know, it all started for Kenny Niamatololo's defense with this trick play. Little flip out, little pass back, big gain down the field, and it all leans, leads to goal line and a fullback dive for six points. Air Force has grabbed the lead late in the fourth. The flags fly, the sun sets. These were your keys, my friend. Yeah, make plays in the passing game. And man, has Air Force and Hammond done that? The last one with that 41, 41 yard pass on a trick play. Navy's forced turnovers, but not one lately. And that's been the difference, especially in this fourth quarter where the two big plays were the sneak by Hammond getting the ball over the top. The long trick play down the left side of the field, setting up red zone and goal line plays, and Hammond in this offense, and Burdow, the first the fullback, finishing this thing off. Air Force had been outscored in fourth quarters, 40 to 16 on the season, entering this game. A little deceiving. They blew out an FCS opponent at Colgate. They had a tightrope walk against Colorado, a nationally ranked Boise State team, but it is a contrast. Oh, it is. It definitely is. And, and it's a great sign for a football team and you can finish like this. Now can Navy return the favor and finish the game? Three minutes, 15 seconds, two timeouts. Remember the two years ago, Navy had three different three touchdown leads, fell behind to Air Force late stage fourth quarter, went the field in less than two minutes when Tyler Carmona's only catch of the game was the winner with 15 seconds to go. Ken Diamantololo talks about how 
mirror like these games can be for everyone involved. Yeah, he's he's in he's in big time need of some chunk plays. This is not a long sustained option drive. He needs some help from the passing game here. Michael Cooper top of the screen. Chance Warren. He can throw. He does. Warren connects. Complete to Taj Malloy. That is his first catch of the year, 19 yards. Chance Warren threatened to pass earlier. Malloy coming around from the halfback spot. He's the one that flipped the ball to Chance Warren. And Warren finally finishes off that threat of the pass. When Warren was a quarterback in high school. He late goes way wide top of the screen. There's one of those passing chunk plays we talked about. Play fake. Perry. On the roll, flag out, another flag. Holding. That's going to go against Navy. That'll be the seventh penalty holding, of the day. Holding, number 71, offense. That penalty is enforced from the previous spot, 10 yards. It's first down. Billy Honaker, a tackle. Yeah, Billy Honaker, the right tackle, working out there on Jackson. And that always happens. In fact, the reason that was called holding, Jackson's trying to spin out of the block. And when a defensive lineman tries to spin out of the block and the offensive lineman's got a hold of him, the official sees that body trying to twist and not being able to. Uncharacteristic, very high number of penalties for Navy. Three-man front, they send four. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage, Kyle Johnson. Really lucky it was knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Down. Tell you if that thing's not knocked down, I think it's Zane Lewis at cornerback. He's got a chance to go a long way with that ball because he's going to undercut it. That was Jake Sawzik who helped knock it free. Ken Niamatololo entering the fourth with the lead, 74 and 5 as the Navy head man. It was 21 9. It was a different game at the end of the third quarter. Perry on the roll with Smith providing escort off the pump. He takes a shot. Perry floats it. C.J. Williams, that went from pick to perfection as he beat Garrett Coppola. I tell you, these running backs, they call them A-backs, they are just incredible as receivers. They're not only unbelievable runners, these young men, while being not the biggest players on this offense, as a group, have incredible hands. C.J. Williams, great example. 32 yards there in his second catch of the day. Perry, reverse it again, Cooper. Michael Cooper. Down right near the 27. That'll be about eight. You know, you called that reverse. Once he got four yards, that reverse was a success. It's first down. You got seven yards out of that reverse. Now you've affected the defense. Now when you see motion, the defense has to allow for it. Williams in the right slot, second and three. Inside run to get the first down that'll stop the clock. Jake Sawzik the stop. The Navy's inside of the 25. 126 to go. Clock stopped while they set the ball. It's Taylor down here. Perry keeps. Air Force sniffed it out. And he's out of bounds. Helped out a play by Shawzik, who's made a number of plays on this drive. Yeah, there wasn't much to do on that. That was wonderful execution defensively by Air Force. There's a team used to the option. Sleight of hand isn't going to really convince much, many players on defense as they're used to the option. Think they care about this game here? Perry. Step up and fly. And Perry's down to the 15. Grant Teal takes him out. He's going to be a yard shy. 56 seconds, two timeouts. Nelson Smith stood up hard. Doesn't for Fina and Jackson, fourth down. And Navy's going to have to call a timeout here. Freeze the clock with fourth down to come 
Randy, my goodness. Watch this defense. Fafita basically takes on two defense offensive linemen and works his way through two of them. And that's Fafita that makes first contact. Smith comes off it, and then he gets double teamed by Jackson and Fafita. So what's the dialogue here? You got one timeout. What do you do to get the yard, and what's the ripple effect? Where are you going to take your chances? Are you going to take your chance with a ball on a throw that either might just, if it's not accurate, not much of a chance? Do you run inside where Fafita and Jackson just stuffed you? My guess is you're going to see an option on the outside. Navy, one of the best fourth down teams offensively in America, 73%. Air Force, one of the best defensively, 30%, including an 0 for 4 last week for San Jose State. Double tight. Perry follows. And Malcolm Perry seems to have it with the spot here. That converts 39 seconds, one timeout down four. You've got that timeout, you have 39 seconds. Now you have the first down. And an official timeout measurement here. Did he get it? Where should the football be? That knee is down. The knee was down on about the nine yard line, but the ball was almost at the eight. Trying to get to the 14 here. And Navy's got it, first down. Yeah, it was the knee on the 13, I should have said. The ball was on the 14. Troy Calhoun barks out the commands. It's all coming down to this. Navy led 21-9 after three quarters. First time we see this formation. Man defense on the bottom of the screen. Play fake. Perry. Rolls. Gets past Sozik. Lost the football. Was he out of bounds? Yes. 26 seconds. He was in the air when he lost it. That's for sure. Wow. That was Jackson. Yeah. The ball bounced out of bounds, and Higgins fell on it when it came back inside. First and goal, one timeout, 26 seconds. Double tight formation, big man football, man on man. Perry following Smith, Malcolm Perry, touchdown Navy. Side, Billy Honaker, Peter Nesterwitz. That was some pretty stuff by them. Because they opened up, they collapsed that side of the defense of Air Force. Critical point after still to come here. 23 seconds. The freshman Bijan Nichols badly missed a field goal earlier in the game. Point after is good. Two years ago, it was 11 plays, 75 yards for Navy to win it. This drive, 11 plays, 75 yards to take the lead. Perry knows it as soon as he clears that end, that he's got some points on his hands. But talk about effort. He goes airborne. After taking that beating, barely to even lay, gets a finger laid on him. Boy, nice job on the outside of blocking and Kenny Niamatololo and his staff doing the happy dance. The Navy troops, they love that, as does the brigade. Now, do you kick off kickoff? Because remember, Troy Calhoun and his staff loves to call it a fair catch, take the ball on the 25. I'm guessing you got to kick the ball down low on the ground, nail it low, and 
Shoot it down towards that returner. Make him return the ball. Keep it on the ground. Jake Conkey has hit from as long as 49. Did so in this game is career long. They've changed deep returners. It's Josh Stoner, the tailback. First time he has done that today. The boot from J.R. Osborne, kickoff specialist. And Stoner surges. Stoner. Knocked down. 17 seconds. Penalty. Austin Talbert loving the stop. Is that a flag or? Oh, no, it was a shoe. So what do you do? Air Force three timeouts, but some precious seconds lost there on the kick return that didn't yield a whole lot. Pretty simple defensively. You're familiar with the term deeper than the deepest. You don't let anybody you get in front of you get behind you. You keep everything in front of you here. Look at these deep safeties. Hammond. Fires. Sanders one on one. Incomplete. Again matched up with Michael McMorris. 11 seconds. Air Force needs to get to about the 33 for the periphery of Conkey's range. Tell you, McMorris has done a really nice job of hand fighting physically with a guy that's much bigger than him. Sanders getting away with being very physical himself. Air Force remains under center, second down. Hammond over the middle, incomplete, the timing off. Benjamin Waters did not know it was coming. Seven seconds. Yeah, Benjamin Waters, actually, you throw that ball just a freckle earlier, he's wide open over the middle of the field. The whole team has won six straight matchups. There are at least two plays left in this game. Your average play is going to take about five or six seconds to run. Fourth biggest crowd of the history of this stadium on hand to witness. Three man front, they only bring three. Hammond is all day. He fires Sanders again. Knocked away by Fockman. One second. One more play to go for Navy. Now, Kenny Montalolo told us about the arm strength of DJ Hammond. He can he even find end zone here. Well, from where he is, DJ Hammond can at least get it to the op but the opposite 25 yard line. Now, Navy calls timeout. It exhausts its timeout. What's the dialogue in each huddle here? What are you talking about? Well, if you've got one of those hook and lateral kind of plays in right. your Air Force, this is where you break it out. You practice this a couple times a week. Last play of the game. Catch the ball, lateral, lateral. Keep it going. Keep it alive like a rugby run. On defense, you're going to get deep. You're going to have two defensive backs at least 30, 40 yards off the ball not letting anything get deep that can play forward for an interception. It is worth noting during warmups today, DJ Hammond threw to the goal line from the 50 on his knees, showing off his arm strength. Well, if he does that now, he's going to be down and the play won't count. <laughs> well, the pre man is on. Let's see what Troy Calhoun can concoct. Field goal game. One second. Hammond slings it. Here come the laterals. Now the tackle. Ball free. Navy wins it. Touchdown for an exclamation point. Wow, what a scene. So do you think this is just another game? The entire brigade spilling out out of the field. 
The winner of this game has gone on to win the CIC 20 of the last 22 years. And there's Tony Brown pouncing, scooping, and scoring. This game, a big one for Malcolm Perry, who Mal demonstrated so much toughness. Malcolm Perry's shoulder just got a lot better. Feels a lot better. And there, you'd be hard-pressed to find a coach that has better running celebrations than Kenny <laughs> Neal Atololo. <laughs> Speaking of running, how about about 4,000 guys running on the field? The entire brigade, the men and women that will go on in service and leadership. And we still have that unbelievable tradition. Air Force will sing first of their alma mater, then Navy. Win first, sing second, as they say. A very deceiving final score, 34-25. Somebody will bring up this game to Kenny Amatololo years from now. That was an easy one, right? Oh, yeah. The eyes will pop. Your basic nine-point win, right, Coach? <laughs> Well, time now for the alma maters as Air Force gathers the Falcons go first. Huh? We gotta bring back this. from one corner to the other. Normally, it's the team running to the brigade. Today, it's the brigade running with the team. And there's usually a major reward for home football wins. I think that can be heightened for the entire student body when it comes against a fellow academy. There should be an award if he can get all these people back in the stands before they <laughs> sing this song. Now time for the Navy blue and gold. had great games. He's had huge stat games. This is probably his best game, right, of his career. It's his finest moment so far as a midshipman. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Over 100 in the air and on the ground, an embrace with DJ Hammond. Incredible respect. And downstairs, she and Stanwick Birch with the head man, Ken Diamantololo. Well, Coach, you told me at half that you needed to finish. You did just that. What was going through your mind those last few minutes? Why do these games always got to come like this? I mean, you got to give Air Force credit, bounce back. Troy's got a great team, resilient kids. But 
proud of our guys, really proud of Malcolm, our team, our defense, our offense, special team, just proud of our kids. You got to think back to last year. I know you said you weren't thinking about last year's game, but to come back this year with this revenge, how good does it feel? Just happy for our kids, Shane. Just more important, just for our guys. They work so hard. This is a tough school place to go to school. I'm happy for them. They are so exciting. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Always emotional, and, and that comes from his love and his affection for his players, including his quarterback, Malcolm Perry, downstairs with Sheehan. Well, you've got to be super excited. Talk to us through the last few minutes. It looked like the Air Force was going to run away with it. What was going through your head? Uh, just keep you guys motivated. Keep that same mindset, you know, that we're, we're going to win the game. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud of the team. That's what they did, and they performed well. The talk about just winning their comeback. What were you talking about in the sideline? What was going through your head? You had to leave the field a couple times with injury. What was happening? Uh, just a little, little bruise I've been uh, dealing with. Uh, I'm good now. I'm good. Uh, but just keeping the guys motivated, like I said, um, keeping that same mentality, foot on the gas, and, uh, you know, it turned out well. There, this is one of the huge goals of the program, to beat Air Force. You do that today, get revenge. This is the last touchdown. Does that, how does that rank in terms of all the touchdowns you've scored? Uh, I think that's definitely number one now. Um, it feels great, uh, but it's only step one. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the rest of the way. Great win. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that, Sheehan, and to Malcolm Perry. An outstanding display, a true thriller. For the Hall of Famer, Randy Cross, Sheehan Standwick Birch, our entire crew, I'm John Sadak. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. So long from Annapolis, back to New York, inside college football. Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, Kevin Carter. John, Randy, she and the entire CBS Sports Network crew in Annapolis, incredible. We got drama everywhere right now <laughs> on the CBS family. Brent Silver, Houston Nutt, Kevin Carter. 34-25 uh, uh, is the final damage. And for Ania Matololo, you can see how much it means for him and for these guys coming off a down season. They are off to a tremendous start. And this is a massive win and a massive come from behind in the fourth quarter. No question about it, Brent. And, and you said it. You look at last year and all the troubles they had, and then you're behind. It's easy to let go of the rope. It's easy to say, I confess, it's your fault. But you saw this. You saw team. Both teams played extremely hard, no question. But Malcolm Perry, he took that ball and put his team on his back. And he had 23 carries for 120 yards, critical yards, tough yards. He's a leader. He's a winner. Fun to watch. Kevin, what was your takeaway? At 144 in the air for Malcolm Perry. Then you compare the heart they had to have to finish this game because Donald Hammond III had a monster fourth quarter. 17 points in the fourth quarter. He came on. Yeah. 205 passing yards. I think that's career high for Donald Hammond III for Air Force. This was a good game today, but Navy persevering, fighting, winning the war of this one. Great game. John Great. Sadak mentioned it towards the end of the telecast. 20 of the last 22 years, the winner of this particular matchup has gone on to win the Commander in Chiefs. Army will have something to say about it, although they fell earlier today here on Armed Services Saturday on CBS Sports Network, fell by nine uh, to Tulane. All right, these were the two huge plays when you're talking about the quarterback for Navy. Yeah. I mean, you need a guy like Perry to step up in key situations, and he did inside the final minute. He did, and I tell you, when you run the option over and over and over, then you got a guy like right here, drops back, nothing there. And look at the effort, <laughs> trying to get to the goal line, get every inch. Now they run the speed option, well blocked, and gets in the end zone. And Malcolm Perry is certainly a guy that they have rallied around all season long. He continues his phenomenal career. 34-25 is the final damage. And again, despite the 195 through the air for Donald Hammond III. So that's the story currently. And again, Army lost earlier here on CBS Sports Network.